On my modular synth system, I absolutely fell in love with the Mordax Data Oscilloscope module. I started making it a staple in almost every patch I made. First, for the tuner, because it actually provides an ability to tune my oscillators really easily. And for the oscilloscope, so I could see the sound I was creating or the modulation signals. It helped me learn the difference between gates and triggers and 5 volts and negative 5 volts and 10 volts. It helped me understand whether I was getting what I expected I was getting when something didn't sound right or when it sounded amazing. It helped me understand why. When I got back to my desktop since though, I really missed having an oscilloscope. And when I started looking online for an oscilloscope, all I found were the old style oscilloscope. The Korg NTS2 seems like a perfect answer for me. It's got an oscilloscope, it's got a tuner, it's got a spectrum analyzer, and it creates modulation waves. And it's so portable, I can bring it over to the synth I need, and if it's got a CV input for modulation, I just plug it in. And it was only $229 as a kit. I had to build it, but it came with a book that lists for $45 on Amazon. So it's actually quite a cheap solution. The Korg NTS2 has two inputs. The first input I'm gonna to connect to a sine wave. You can immediately see it coming through. And the second input will go to a square wave. Let's start with the basics. First, the power. It's powered by either two AA batteries or USB. I have it powered here using USB just from my computer. Next, the connectivity. It's got two inputs for the input signals that you want to scope or analyze. It's got two through connections, so you can send the audio signals or the control voltage signals that you're scoping back out to your equipment. It's got two outputs because it actually generates voltage waves that you can use in your audio equipment. We'll show that. It's got the USB connection and then the on-off switch. The front panel controls are quite simple. It's got two indicators for the waves being out, both the out one and out two. It's got one potentiometer for controlling some of the settings. And then it's got a stream of buttons on the bottom that associate to the functions shown on the screen. It is not a touch screen. It's got a stop start button so you can stop the wave or stop the outputs and restart them. The NTS2 has four operating modes and that's chosen through the first button which brings up a menu. We can see now it's on the scope function but if I press the button it'll show me the other modes. There's scope, wave, FFT, tuner, and global settings. In scope mode you have choices of what to display. The first choice is overlay where it shows one signal and you can choose the signal with the potentiometer. Out of the four signals coming from the two inputs since each one is stereo. I only have two mono inputs coming in right now. The next display mode is separate two, which shows me two of the select inputs. And I can again choose which two with the potentiometer where it goes through all the combinations of which two. I'll probably want this one. The next is separate four, which shows me all four inputs if I had two inputs in each of these stereo cables. And the last is XY, which is an interesting display graphically of the X and Y axis being used to map the two signals on inputs one and two. The next setting I can control is the vertical. Which signals do I want? At what voltage range? So the higher the voltage range, the smaller the graph. At the lower voltage ranges, the larger the graph. And again, I can choose which one I'm controlling by pressing the vertical button and selecting. And it changes which input I'm actually controlling. The next control is the horizontal control, which lets me control the timing of the wave. And I can go from one second all the way to 0 0.05 milliseconds.
somewhere at around two milliseconds is actually quite useful. I can also change the position of the horizontal. You can see that center line, I can shift it right or left. The next control is the trigger, where you can decide to go auto on the rise, on the fall, on the rise for a single instance of the wave, or on the fall of a single instance of the wave. I typically keep this on auto. And again, you can start and stop with the start stop button. So that's a simple scoping of a wave. That's the oscilloscope, but there's so much more. The next function after the oscilloscope is wave generation. If you need an LFO or some kind of CV control, you can actually generate waves. You can choose from two different outputs, output one and output two. They're actually ordered in what seems to be reversed because they're aligned to the output cable positions. This is output one and that's output two. Right now I'm controlling the clock of my synthesizer using output two with a square wave LFO. The categories I can choose from the LFO are controlled by choosing category and some of the parameters for them. As I click the category button, it changes which parameter I'm controlling. So under category, I can choose LFO, noise, pulse, envelope, or even all the way back to oscillator, which is basically an audio rate oscillator. That means this is a synth. It's not just an oscilloscope. So I'm using LFO square wave right now. I can change the wave type and the rate by clicking the edit button on this half of the screen. Right now I'm at 36 BPM. I'll change the volume on my synthesizer so you can hear the difference as I change that. Also change the direction to say is it going to be only positive voltages, positive and negative voltages, or only negative voltages. So that's positive only, that's positive and negative, and that's negative only. Again, quite useful, particularly for an LFO. And I can change the phase as well. Shifting the wave as needed. And this is just duplicated for the right side, where I have category again, and I can edit the parameters. One of the tricky things about this segment of the wave control is these two output LEDs. It took me a while to realize that what I'm controlling with the start stop button when I'm in wave mode is whichever output has the focus. So if I change the focus to output two and I press start stop, I just stopped output two. And if I go over to output one and I press start stop, I ended wave one. Again, I can start them back up by choosing them and starting them. The next mode is a spectrum analyzer mode, otherwise known as an FFT, a fast Fourier transform algorithm. And this gives me a chance to see the harmonic series. In this mode, I can change the input, which changes up top. The vertical which again is the level of amplitude in voltage. The horizontal which lets me change the range
and I can do it in several ways. I can do it by time, by position, by FFT range or FFT position. I find range to be the most useful. And then again, the trigger setting, very similar to what we saw in the scope. The next mode is quite useful. It's the tuner mode. And I find myself using this all the time. And I change my input. Now I can tune this. This also has two displays for the tuner, the meter or the needle. You can also change the calibration if you're not happy with 440. and you can change whether or not the scope shows up on your training meter. The last mode is global settings, which lets you change settings about the input, whether you're AC or DC coupled, the brightness, how long it takes for the thing to go to sleep, and other settings, including the battery type, and of course, credits where credit is due. The Korg NTS-2. <laughs> the Korg... The Korg NTS-2 seems like perfect... Uh, It's also a tuner. Yep. <laughs> yep, it's a tuner. Yeah.